welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation would begin with the People's Democratic Party, PDP. There seems to be a crisis internally there, and we'll be speaking about this with a political analyst, Mr. Okunabo in Kutaria. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Uh, good morning, viewers. Okay, let's begin with how you see what's happening with the PDP. How would you analyze um, the situation where people are resigning from the party, defecting, and are saying this is a problem of poor leadership from Uche Secundus? Uche Secundus releases a statement daring people to go ahead and list exactly what their challenges are. Um, Atiku also putting out a statement to say that he has nothing to do with what's happening with Secundus. How do you see it? I describe it as an inane, senseless, passing macabre dance at the theater of megalomania and uh, vigorous control. The allegations are sweeping. I said this in a sister station where I said it's just uh, reasons ostensibly advanced for his resignation by characters or persons who believe that is continuous stay in office. Because as the party's national chairman, uh, he has a major role, crucial role to play in who succeeds him. And whoever is going to succeed Prince, which is accomplished, is also very important and has a crucial role to play in who emerges as the party's uh, presidential candidate, governorship candidate, and all other offices that will be contested for in 2023. And so what they did was to architecture this scheme, give the world the impression, I'm not a PDP member, I'm not an ABC member, so when I speak, I speak frankly. What they did, or what they are doing, is to architecture this scheme in order to out, to remove future circumstances. And why not wait? If you look at the logic, why it, it, it defies any form of logic. In another two, three months, or there about we are for us. They are not ready to win because they are hungering for the soul of that party. So what they want is, because in two or three months, when he meets at the expiration of his tenure, when he meets, he is also going to play a major role in who he makes. You cannot take for granted the power of a chairman of the party. Even if you are a government, you can't take that for granted. As well for somebody who would have been in office for four years, you can't take his class for granted. So what they are trying to do is to hamstring that process. So the person is let him get out. We are going to get our lawyers, we are going to get our officials into office. And as uh, interim uh, 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 chairman or interim leaders, and they will now meet why those that will come in as substantive leaders. That is what this whole Ula Balu is all about. Mr. Mr. I, I agree. I agree. Just one second. I agree. That the leadership is not as varied as the party, no is not as varied as the APC was. But also consider the environment in which we find ourselves. We have a government that is intolerant and impregnant to continue to. We also want to happen to Unis Amnesty, unlike the Jonathan government that was quite tolerant of criticism. So these are the issues playing out. That, that's where I, I was, you know, that's headed. Not, that's not how I that's yeah, I yeah. Uh, you know, so so is is there a sense in in saying that um, the reason behind all of this is because they know that they have very very major elections coming up in 2023, and they would need to have a, a party chairman that is more vibrant, um, or you know more similar to what the APC was in 2014 in the build up to the elections. Then is that a sensible th a sensible theory to push forward that Uche Secundus has not been or not has had as much <laughs> vibrance in him to lead the party to victory if they are serious about taking over in 2023. Yes, there were a few seconds of uh, cataclysmic leadership and, it's still, and, of, and of abysmal performance. I will also agree that uh, Secondo's leadership is not as vibrant as the expected as a major position party. But then, that argument is pulverized by the fact that secondaries will not be in office until 2023, when the national elections will take place. 
you have just two, three months. So why not allow the two, three months to expire? And you can now orchestrate those that will come into office and give you the efficacious leadership you're talking about. That is the argument there. So why a lot of people are saying no, and I also weave in slanted interpretations into whatever is going on. It's simple because they believe that this man is not his stainless, they're probably October, November, or January about. So why not just let it be? Then you now bring in that vibrant man that you believe that will take the party that will ensure victory of the PDP come twenty twenty three. You have just about you have more than a year to go. So why are you in a hurry? So it's more or less like that's why the position is more or less like a vendetta. And I think when you consider the snarky remarks made by the likes of Governor Yes of Wiki and Co, who have not uh, stopped at anything in condemning, taking on break as the British Secondary leadership. Even Chicago, okay, I tell you one thing now. Uh Secondus made a protest. I remember that was it Elanster or thereabout, where even us in Mapa, the deputy former speaker of the House of National uh of Red. Uh, also participated as protest, in fact, that protest. And what did the government of Russia say? He said, rather than win members, you are protesting. So what are you going to do? The protest was also part of the vibrancy people we are talking about. And considering the attrition going on right now in the PDP, that's why I say it is in here, it's completely selfless. You don't need all these problems. There are ways you could go about it. Of course, conflict is a function of the character. And because man cannot not communicate, man is prone to come. But the resolution of that conflict is what the peace. And that makes you a leader. All so right. That is what we are talking about. So that are you timing is wrong. Are you basically then right, saying that? that, 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 that I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm also not condemning it, but the timing is wrong. Okay. I I so also need to address signals. Okay, you've said a couple of things that I, that I need you to piece together for me. Are you basically saying that this is not a challenge of, you know, the leadership of the person Uche Sekondos, but this is personal? I think it's more, more, it's more personal than uh, 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 leadership. I think it has to do with, uh, that's why I said it's in data. It's, uh, that's what I mean. Anyway, that, that's my thinking. Uh, they have not really come out to tell us exactly what the problem is. Uh, we are only extrapolating. That's what we are doing. We blame all the fish snippers of information together and assume that this is what is going on. But I don't think it's more of leadership. Because if it's leadership, it is simple. Like I rightly said, uh, you just wait for the man. He's standing on the square in two, three months. Wait for him to get out of office and get the leader you want. Because these are precaution signs of failure. You also telling the party, because when there's an implosion, what do you expect others to do? You're also telling the party that look, uh, you're also telling the party that look, the PDP in itself is not another. We are saying the ATC is in Tata. Now the PDP has joined full of shoot. So it, it, is, it is not healthy for the party, it doesn't speak well for the party. So they're not going there for his tenor to expect and then get somebody wherever they want to get in office. But they are scared that it's also going to influence with good society. That's the truth. Is there, um, how much damage do you think this does to their chances if they are not able to put their house in order in time um, for, you know, the elections and the build up to the elections? How much damage do you think this does? And of course, also respond to, you know, the fact that there have been more than a comfortable number of PDP governors and members who have decamped to the APC, uh, even with That's all the criticism of the APC. That is the attrition I talked about. And that's why I said you, you would have been set constant, more seconds in, in addressing these issues. Because a lot of people are leaving. Now they are leaving justification. You know, the National Assembly members cannot leave. The legislators cannot leave unless you have crisis in the party. That is the law. Now, they can exploit this to me. That's why I said it, it, it is not wise for yeah. any political point right now to think of these things. He's not going to be in office till next year. More people are still going to leave. The LWC member, one of them allegedly defected to APC. So these things are used as special reasons to leave the party. The party is grinding the walls. The, how, much damage, the how much damage does this do? I don't know it's grinding to a halt. Yeah. So if you're politically sagacious, you will try to save the party. You're, the members are supposed to be what I call salvers. Those that are going to salvage, save the party. 
and not those that are going to deep it, especially the crisis in the party. Because that's exactly what has happened, especially not the crisis. And they have divided amongst the second and third. Don't forget the PDP is in the opposition. So he doesn't need all this needless giving, needless giving. You don't need them in the party right now. So if you, if you love the party and your political sagacious, you will avoid it. Especially when you know that the man is in the twilight of his tenure. What, what is the rush? Why are you rushing? Just because you don't want him to influence who will succeed him. It's as simple as that. Okay. And the man has said he's not going to resign. So you can imagine, he has now said he's not going to resign. So he has dead those that are challenging him. And what do you think will be the outcome? The generation of the crisis. So it's definitely not necessary. And a lot of people will leave. Well, people are actually tired of PDP and APC. People are saying PDP come back because of the abysmal performance of APC. Not that PDP is better, not that PDP is better. But they believe that you cannot uh, realize your ambition in any other political party because the big wings are in this party. But people will leave and form another party, just as they did in 2023 and 2013 and 2014, form another party that will come and beat both the PDP and the APC in the next election. So it is big right now you need to get it and not to worsen the situation you already have in the past. It's yeah. very unnecessary, very unnecessary. Okay, so we, we saw a statement that the PDP House Caucus um, released yesterday. They said that they're urging um, the national chairman, uh, Prince Ocho Secondus, to go ahead to resign as a you know, necessary personal sacrifice worthy of a leader. Uh, how do you analyze this, saying that it's a sacrifice that he needs to make? Um, <laughs> you know, it's a Secondus to decide. You know, every spirit you go to a tyrant. And when a man is pushed to the wall, he bounces back with his double step. I think second probably would have resigned. But because he has a conviction that this thing is being engineered and orchestrated by his enemies or perceived enemies, he wants to prove a point that he cannot be touched on that. Mm. That's exactly why he said he's not going to resign. That is my thing. I have not talked to second I put the problem the last time I saw the conduct was when I was in office. I have not seen him since then. That's the truth. So, but you see, he believes that he's been oppressed, he's been marginalized by certain persons that are remotely controlling this thing. And so he doesn't want to capitulate. That's the truth. That's why he says, I will not resign. All right. That's the truth about it. Uh, Mr. Inkotari, I want us to talk now about. Um persons in the party, you know, that might be very relevant in, uh, you know, in the search for peace. Uh, the former Senate President Bukola Saraki, uh, Atiku Abubakar, former President Goodluck Jonathan, these are still some of the very high-ranked members of the People's Democratic Party. Do you think that they would be of any relevance in the search for peace here? Uh, well, it all depends on the nature of the sincerity of Bukola. Of course, um, if the issue of peace has to do with resignation of Secondus, I don't see that coming to fruition. He has said he was not going to resign, and he has got two, three months to go, or three, four months to go, there about. So, as leaders and as peacemakers, what I expect them to do is to campaign them by all those calling for his resignation to tarry a while. Exercise patience. Because uh, it will be like, a, a, you know, not also forget, it has to do with the reputation of one. When you leave, even 20 years after, it will be said that you were kicked out of office for bad leadership. Yes, it, it, it is going to cast a swell on your credibility or reputation of you as a leader. So, a lot of what I'll advise the so called leaders, let's not say so called, because that might sound derogatory, the leaders and the peacemakers. Supposed that peacemaker, because I don't really know the inclination. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of these politicians in the morning they are with Mr. A, and in the evening they are with Mr. B. And when they come to public, they pretend to be neutral. That's the truth about politics. So these supposed that peacemakers should not also advise those calling for the now. I think it's now an ego battle. Those calling for resignation are insisting 
that if we if he doesn't resign, if he's not compelled to resign, then we have lost. He has won the war. He is also saying, no, not at all. You cannot force me to resign. It is not because people want me to go. It is because particular say my people want me out of office. Yeah. That is the clash. So what my advice is, they should plead with those calling for a it, it is easier to plead with them and for them to agree than for secondaries. Because secondaries will have to do with this credibility. So they should plead with those calling for a They should totally away. Exercise patience. In three, four months, you'll be out of power. And now you would have loved to be re-elected. But it's obvious right now that he's not going to get a re-election. Because it's going to be a pretty illusion if he tries it. He's not going to get that in a re-election. So allow him to finish. Two, three months, let him leave that office. And whoever you want to come in to take over, that's okay. And that, that's the case we are talking about. Right. People okay. need to be more interested in getting more members than in pressing the crisis in the party. Mm. So when we take a look at this statement, you know, that was released yesterday by the PDP House caucus, um, we saw that, first of all, there are 19 members of the National Working Committee in the PDP, and only six of them signed that statement, you know, saying that they're in support of um, Secundus being out of the party. Now, Sarah Dixon, in his own analysis of this, went on to say that the fact that it's even a minority, only six people signing that statement, that is a... Is a, it's a, in fact gross misconduct and they should be penalized for that. Do you agree with that angle? No, 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 no. I don't think right anybody should penalize me. I don't think so. I mean, in the interest of peace, right now they are worried. That's why people are uh, uh, thundering for more books and granites. But if you really want peace, I also am advised to penalize anybody. It's not necessary right now. Why are you going to penalize them? For how many months? Is it saying they should be suspended from the party or what? Or expelled from the party? It's not necessary. You know, right now you need peace. You don't need to reach accommodation on the issue. So he doesn't need to penalize anybody. Nobody should be penalized. They should just agree or manage. You know, this way you talk of management of conflict. There's a difference between resolution of conflict and management of conflict. When resolution of conflict is almost impossible, then you resort to management of conflict. And that is what I expect them to do right now, to manage the conflict until the tenure of the present NWC member has to expire. And after that, then you can get whoever you want. But I think the major problem is the fear that he's going to influence who will succeed him. I think that is the major problem. Otherwise, even those calling for his move, probably would have been removed. Now, to answer your question, unequivocally, they don't need to be penalized. Okay, away, away from any penalties now, um, I was talking about 19 NWC members, only six appended their signature to that. So would you even say that that call for his resignation is a nullity? Seeing that, you know, it seems like a minority voice speaking. Yeah, I, 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 I would dismiss it as prominent, political prominent. It's a major, they're just a back in the media work. It's not going to happen. Out of 19, you're talking about six. And that's why I told them that the few who are saying that the PCM to do those in system and the move It's not going to work. I mean, it's a delusional exercise, discussion. So, uh, since it's not going to have any effect, you don't need to penalize them. Don't allow them. I mean, you need to have disagree. In, even if you disagree with your parents, you disagree with your children, you disagree with your friends, even when you're doing it, you disagree, even if it's not that big. So, uh, it is okay. I mean, uh, all that conflict, all that, they say, uh, all that without. Uh, uh, complexity is bottom. up. Complexity without other is confusion. You need a synthesis of both to make life interesting. So it's okay. I mean, it's safe. The most, the most important thing is that the sex cannot take you out of office. Mm. All right. And, and now I, I want us to talk of. Um, I want to talk now on the, the PDP itself as an, as an opposition party. Um, two questions I'm going to ask. The first one was the same, same question, basically is, you know, how you feel the PDP could have done better. And I remember that you mentioned that we're in, you know, peculiar times now. It's not the same way the former administration handled opposition, you know, that the current administration is handling opposition. But in what ways do you think the PDP could have done better as an opposition party to, you know, ensure that they still have, you know, Nigerians believing in them as, you know, an option? And then second, do you think that PDP governors themselves have not done well enough to show that, you know, the PDP is still a party that, you know, has a totally different ideology and thinking and, you know, is more progressive than the APC? 
Well, to answer the first segment of the question, um, the party PDP is always reactive and not proactive, which is not too good. But we want to proactive. In fact, we must set the agenda. You know, propagandizing is allowed when politics. You must set the agenda and let the government react. That is one. The PDP is not reactive. And I expect the PDP to always organize symposia, you know, talk show, protests here and there. There are so many issues that Nigerians are not happy with. We're talking of recently the PID bill. We are talking of uh, the controversial electronic transmission and so on. The PDP should just capitalize on this thing, so organize symposia, talk show, protest, peaceful protest, which is allowed within, within the law, within our constitution. These are the things we expect. You know, and that's why they say, because these are the things my Mohammed did. Yes. He criticized even the best policy that Buddha Jonathan had. He criticized. You know, and definitely in doing this, you are going to have some sympathy and some followers. So if he does, and because to Jonathan has raised far, far better than this president administration, you cannot compare. But if like Mohammed and the APC could achieve what they achieved, then of course it, it should have been an easy thing for the PDP member. Unfortunately, they have been created in that regard. That is one. Then you talked of um, something again. We're talking about state wise. State wise, PDP governors Governor, in their state, Governor. yes. Um, very few governors. Maybe you ask of how many PDP governors? Very few. Let's say three, four. <laughs> Just three, four. Yes. And it really has nothing to do with the party. Please, let us get that straight. It has to do with the individual. The party has no ideology. Most APC members today, we are PDP members as governors or as ministers. And most PDP members, well, some PDP governors have moved from PDP to APC. Who are they going to bring? The boss stops at their table. They are, they are the ones in driving seat. So if the people are to defect in the state, the those that are to defect are local government chairmen, commissioners, and so, who believe that the dividend of democracy is not tripling that, it's not cascading, not for the government itself. Because he, 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 what does he say? He, he's not to wrong to anybody. Like they will wrong to him. He takes the decision. So why will he decide? That's why I say, no ideology. I'm not sure to say, these people are people with distorted perception of life that they are accidentally discharged in the political service. They don't have a, it's just there for autocentric reasons, not altruistic reasons. And so it has nothing to do with the party. It has to do, it has nothing to do with governance, good leadership. It has to do with stomach, gastric prison, where will I go to ensure that my ambition is realized? Yeah. Let me watch to the APC. Mm. You know, don't forget that uh, Muazu and few others also accused, are also alluding to dictatorship in the Philippines, that the party is being controlled by one or two persons. And so they believe that they cannot achieve their ambition in that party. And most of these governors have the ambition to become vice president and president. And those that are accusing are also caught up with such ambitions. So they are the clash. So the right. best way I can achieve it is not on the, party, on the platform of the PDP, but on any other platform. Those that are going to be the APC will either return to PDP or go and achieve their aim in another political party. What? The right. political office have just started. Right. By next year, you will see a lot of dynamics play now. Opunabo Inko Taria, thank you so much for your time thank this morning. You. Uh, we hope to speak with you again. Thank you so much. All right. Stay with us. Uh, from the PDP, we're moving on to talk uh, health, and that, that is with regards to COVID-19 vaccinations here in Nigeria. Uh, we're going to be having a uh, medical professional join us to share his thoughts on, uh, of course, Nigeria's vaccination uh, process. We'll be back.